Somebody fapping. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, it's Michelle. <laughs> hey, it's Michelle. It's the start of the Silver Week in Japan, and I am just about to head out to meet my friends. We are gonna go to Kyoto and we're gonna share some of our experiences with you. So let's head out. Silver Week is a period in September where a cluster of Japanese holidays form together a mini vacation. Because that's Japan. You never really get more than a mini vacation. This year I have four consecutive holidays to enjoy, and three of them I get to spend in Kyoto. Fortunately, I've got two lovely ladies for company. This is Aoi. Kyoto is her hometown, and she'll be taking us to different places. And this is Mihyung. Our trip has just started, but she's already hungover. <laughs> <laughs> After arriving, our first target destination was Nishiki Market, but on the way there, we couldn't help but stop at some shops that piqued our interest. Like the store that specializes in washi or Japanese paper. After all that playing around, we finally found our way to Nishiki Market where we were excited to try out different street food. This is Kyoto's version of sweet dumplings. It's dipped in white miso sauce. <laughs> At nightfall, Aoi invited us to our parents' house where we got to taste Kyoto home cooking. Sekihan is sticky rice steamed with azuki beans. In Kyoto, it is common to prepare it with chestnuts. Chawanmushi happens to be one of my favorite Japanese dishes. This egg custard had mushroom, chicken, and lily bulb in it. It was a splendid combination of sweet and savory. Okay. Okay. Day <laughs> two. <laughs> Today we're going to see Arashiyama. It's one of the popular districts of Kyoto. Yay! Bye no frozen. Yeah, 
Hold up. See that sign? It says the world's hottest chili pepper. You guys know where this is going to, right? Dozo, Kangoko Jin. I guess Koreans and Filipinos have similar tastes. After the spice challenge, she went on a 20 minute hike to see a popular Arashiyama attraction monkeys! The rain got heavier after we climbed down from Monkey Park, so we took shelter in a shop that sold mostly cat goods. And this guy. <laughs> okay, I thought this was a cat's good shop, but British Daniel was here, and here, and here. We left the shop before that thing could haunt us any further. Bye, Daniel. After leaving the shop, we went to a yakitori restaurant for dinner and capped the night with good old drinks. <laughs> Alas, we've come to our final day and we've made our way to the traditional landscapes of Gion. Our goal here was to go to an Enkiri Jinja. To explain the gist of it, an Enkiri Jinja is where you go to when you want to cut bad things away from your life, in the belief that you have to do away with the bad for the good to come in. These bad things can be in the form of illnesses like cancer or in the form of bad relationships. A lot of people come here after a breakup or a divorce, which is why this shrine was easily the scariest shrine I've ever been to. Some of the things that people wrote his wishes were more like curses. For example, I wish he suffers or I wish he dies. Wow, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned indeed. One of the symbolic ways to cut bad ties in the shrine is to pass through this huge stone with a very small opening. And you'll have to crawl through that very small space twice. First to sever bad ties and the second time to bind good ones. And no, crawling through that thing wasn't easy. Especially when you have sizable assets. My bum got stuck in that thing. <laughs> you might be wondering why we went there. It wasn't originally part of our itinerary actually. But on day two, we went to a hot spring. And I don't know, maybe it's just when you're naked, you bare your soul or something. But I told a boy that 2016 has been a real roller coaster for me and I actually had to cut several ties. Some willingly and some because I had no other choice. And she wanted to take me to an Enkiri Jinja after that. I guess even though the whole thing was a mere symbolic act that came after the actual severing of ties, it still wasn't an easy thing to do. Nobody wants a bad ending after all. Sometimes, no matter how much you try, no matter how deeply you care about someone, no matter how much you wish to be part of their happiness, your paths are just better off apart, and all that you're really left to do is just wish them well. The best thing to do after an exhausting task? Eat. And what better way to do that in Kyoto than to eat something matcha-flavored? Awoi took us to Tsujiri, a store where people line up to eat matcha-flavored sweets. I happened to order their flagship parfait and it just hit the spot. Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> Next, we headed over to Fushimi to go on a quiet boat ride, taking in all the beauty that surrounded us. Fushimi is also known as Kyoto Sake District, and we three love our alcohol, so we stopped by several places to do some sake tasting. Right before we boarded our train, we had a fabulous dinner. You can eat okonomiyaki anywhere in Japan, but it's nowhere near as good as the ones you find in Kansai. Oh, it's今回の旅行は感想。え、今回のこの感想は私の普段行ってるところに2人が来てくれてすごく嬉しかった。京都危ないから気をつけて。なんで危ないの? <laughs> and that wraps our Kyoto trip. We had such a blast and we hope you enjoyed watching this video as well. We hope it could be a preference the next time we go to Kyoto. For more of our itinerary, please check that out at the official blog slash website for this channel which is tokyopass3.com and because going to the Enkiri Jinja was such a unique experience for me I will be posting more about that experience over at tokyopass3.com and if you're interested please check it out and hey if you like this video help me grow this channel by hitting like share or subscribe I need more subscribers to get my own customized link so if you'd be a darling and help me out that would be so great this has been Michelle for Tokyo Fast 3. Let's talk more about Japan. Until next time, see ya! Libremo Akona Beer. Libremo Akona Beer. Libremo Akona Beer. Libremo Akona Beer. Libremo Akona Beer.